Oh, well, Brenda, you have yeah. had quite the past few months, yeah? I'm, I'm mm -hmm. excited to get a chance to kind of catch up with you and see how things were, do a little check-in, see how things are going. Um, so yeah. I think for anybody who watches this later, maybe the best way to start is just um, talk about what it was like um, before we started working together, kind of where your business was at and what you were struggling with and kind of the problems that you, you were looking to solve or at least kind of thought that you wanted to solve. Yeah, so when I started, I was really, really new into consulting. So my business is more of a consulting business and uh, I provide grant writing services. I have like about five, six products that I try to offer. And uh, when I started, I'd, I'd also just started consulting. So I started as a side hustle. And then by September, because I have a child and there was just too many things happening during COVID, I moved now uh, fully into consulting in September. So I was basically really new, uh, not in my in my consulting world, but more in business management and sales. I was very rusted, mm -hmm. <laughs> and actually, I can say that uh, the first the first clients that I got, I actually just got them because of my CV, so it was easy. Um, but then I needed to sustain that, and so. I try to look for a, uh, a coach that can help me to grow in my sales skills because I had none. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know where to start <laughs> and what I needed to do exactly to get my business running through. So, yeah, that's when I found you. And I'd heard about you like a year before from one of the guys that was just helping me with just a small job. So uh, he told me about you. And then he didn't give me more information. So I went to you to, to, and actually got into your subscription mm -hmm. and I would just listen to what you share. So I was able to compare like different cultures and just learn. I think I initially wanted to, to like uh, come into your program like the previous year, but I just didn't have much information of what it meant and everything. So I found you and <laughs> Then later on, uh, just listening to your emails and you know, listening, not just you know, really listening. I felt like you can help me in that stage in my life. So that's how I joined, and and I've grown through that process. Yeah. So then I I didn't realize that you came through a referral, but you say it was like almost a full year between when you you first heard and then when you decided to get into the program. It's funny you mention that because. Um, it, almost every person that I end up working with has either been on my list or has known about me and been following for, I don't know, at least at least three months, probably closer to six months. And many times it's a year or two. And I try mm -hmm. and tell that to my clients and I say, hey, listen, you know, this is what you can expect. And there's just a there's a long sales cycle, especially the higher ticket the programs are and the things that you offer. Um, but I'm curious, was there was there like anything that any reservations you had before joining the program as to like things that you were like weary of in terms of maybe getting the result or whether or not it would be beneficial? Yeah. So, so uh, when this guy told me about your program, um, so I, if, I think, you know, that I also do like an arts, like I'm an art, like kind of like a really not <laughs> we say an amateur artist. So I had these two skills that I wanted to do, but I didn't know which one would work. So I opened like a Facebook page. I tried to do the art, but I felt like the learning cycle is very long. So uh, when he was helping me, he actually noticed that I had a problem with marketing. So I said, oh, why don't you join um, Jason's, you know, nomad I think it was a nomadic something. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That was, that yeah. was a, an, an old group that we had a, um, a, a long, yeah. like quite a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I went in there. I was like, I just don't understand these people. <laughs> I don't understand their language. So I was like, let me just get into your email list and try to understand what you offer. And through your email is when I discovered, okay, I can go with my passion, but I can also go with my skills. So what mm -hmm. skills do I have? So uh, just listening to your emails, I started really focusing more into the possibility of me having the consulting. And then I put it up and then I kept on learning from the emails. And then uh, 
I think you are offering different like programs at different times. And I'm like, okay, that I don't understand until I reached a point where I, I felt like um, you could actually help me. Not necessarily that I, I didn't feel that before, just that I was at that point when I could make that decision and say, this is a skill that I need and I need mm -hmm. to grow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's incredible. All yeah. Right. So, so it's, it's, it was, it's almost like a year before I actually uh, now connected into the program. And again, um, I'm a, and I've said this many times, <laughs> I'm a slow decision maker. So I want to know for sure that a program would help me for like a longer period of time, just because again, um, I come from a different country. I have to understand the language and everything before I can make that decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you had this really small consulting company when we started working together, and mm -hmm. everything was kind of new, and, and everything was a, really a first time of you engaging in, all right, how do I find people? How do I present myself? How do I make sure that I'm, I'm offering the right, the right product or the right service or the right suite of things? Um, what was the biggest, I think, the biggest aha or, or even the biggest struggle for you as you were going through that process? Um, uh, and, and kind of with, with it really a massive amount of overwhelm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, just when I started, um, one of the things that first I want, I can talk about my goals was to, to learn how to sell my products as a consultant and be able to reach my audience. So some of the things that I was trying to work out maybe through that program, and hopefully I'm answering your, your questions very well. Yeah, but then uh, the idea was, how can I be able to sell to my clients, understand who my clients are and how they will receive my services, where is the best place to find them mm -hmm. and how do I connect with them? Mm -hmm. So that, that was my initial like challenges and when I started the program, I was able to just get that particular aspect to understand. And I'm still understanding even up to now. I can't say I've reached that point. Yeah, but overcoming those challenges first, um, I think the first thing that I probably um, learned is who my client is uh, in terms of consulting. So in, in consulting and in grants, there are very many different clients. Uh, you can reach like a, the grant writer, that's not my client <laughs> because I want to write. Yeah. Uh, there's also nonprofit leaders that are very new, so they don't have any structure. Mm -hmm. I try to reach them, but then there's really no money there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just like uh, only coaching. So this program helped me to understand who my client is. Again, of course, if I can define again, there's the very large corporations and or nonprofits and they already have enough resources to like find maybe a fully full in like grand person so that isn't my client again so my client is a business that probably are making maybe between 250 to around 500,000 a year so then i become more important and that i learned through the class just to know exactly who my client is yeah well that and it's it's a it's something that everybody struggles with, especially in the early stages. Is how do I, I clearly defining who it is you serve, what problem you solve, and what's the process that you use to do that. And so, mm -hmm. I found it interesting too. Is that um, you didn't well, like most people, you didn't just find like instant success, right? It wasn't like oh yeah, now I learned this stuff and now boom, pe people are banging down my door. Like it took a process of evolution after after you actually got out of the program before things really started to pick up yeah did you were you were, did you get discouraged during that period of time i got really overwhelmed i remember when oh. one class i came out like i just don't know i kept on asking questions like who's this asking this question because i was like not myself because i learned this information but then how am i going to apply first i am very um i don't like being online <laughs> It's not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too overwhelming to just keep sharing about me. I'd rather share about something else. So you were very pushy in the sense that you're, you're saying you need to go out there. You need to talk about what you do, you know, build people so that you can connect to people. So that was very, very hard for me to do. So I took like a month off your staff and just went silent for like a month. And then slowly, 
I started building, you know, going back online and uh, sharing with my audience and connecting with them. So I came up like with a strategy and my strategy was like, make sure I connect to five people. Uh, so using my own profile, initially I thought I would use a company profile, but I think as a consultant, you have to prioritize on people first trusting you before they start trusting the company. Mm -hmm. So I started building my profile and then connecting to people. You know, and over time, I think, you know, I was able to pick those strategies. I would still go back. I still even sometimes go back to your sessions and see if, if there's something I can learn and then or something I learned, but I didn't learn the whole process and then go back and put. Yeah. And these strategies I haven't implemented yet. I keep saying I'll go back. I just don't know how to, you know, how to do it. So I have to kind of like understand my audience, understand whether they're ready for something and whether I'll be successful to do that, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody's on a journey. Like, I'm still learning, right? And things are constantly mm -hmm. changing. And so I think if you're not a student all the time, um, yeah. you don't, you're not very good at what you do. You're not a very good consultant. You're not a very good coach. If you're not going back mm -hmm. and constantly continuing to evolve and learn more. And, and if you think you've learned it all, that's a, that's a big problem, but, um, you mm -hmm. clearly have done something right because things are going well. Yeah. You want to tell everybody what's going on now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just through the, the marketing strategies that I, I adopted from your class and, and maybe it's good to talk about those strategies. So just, uh, sharing, uh, more educational content. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I do have a LinkedIn and a Twitter, but I think I, I found more solace in LinkedIn because my clients are professionals, they are nonprofit leaders. So through that, um, what I've been doing is just to keep sharing and sharing. So, and I've shared this initially, what I would get was scammers. And then that, when I would get a scam, I would ask myself a question, why is it that this person reached out to me and not the client I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. And so I would change my strategy and I would define my my education uh, in such a way that I am targeting a specific person or an avatar so that uh, I'm not getting scammers. So over time, I've noticed that uh, uh, clients who come and send me a message again they're non-profit leaders so they don't want to share online because that is too much for them uh, just being a leader and they have probably stuff so they won't do that but they started reaching out to to me like um through my dm or they will book an appointment yeah and that has been very helpful um since the time I started, I think I've gotten almost like about uh, five clients. And again, for me, my process is long because ground writing also includes board. So they take longer to make decisions. So yeah, I've seen that. So I've, I've gotten clients that just want a, a, one product. I've gotten clients that want like lots of like products. And I think most recently I got a client that wanted like a, a full retainer package for for almost seven or eight months. And that's, that's very good. Yeah. And that was, how much was that? Yeah. $30,000. Yeah. $30,000. <laughs> and that's on yeah. top of the other clients that you've been booking too. So you're getting retainer yes. clients for a full year um, yeah. at $30,000 a pop. Uh, yeah. and, and just continuing to evolve in the strategy and yeah? just having conversations with people, just sharing your knowledge and your wisdom. And then, letting people, you know, reaching out and connecting with people and then letting them come to you and having those conversations with them. It's funny how yeah. simple it sounds when you say it and how difficult yeah. it is to actually do in it practice. Is, it is very difficult. <laughs> I tell you, I get really overwhelmed because yeah. there's a lot to convince and you want to, like, you want the client to make the decision without pushing, you know, yeah. and you want them to make a decision that will, you can offer that service for them. You know, because yeah. uh, some clients, I've had clients who are prospects that have made a decision, but I am not the kind of person that can be able to provide that service because of my consulting background. Mm -hmm. So we have to sit in and, and sometimes talk and that wastes a lot of time. So uh, it takes, I think the biggest thing is to know who is your target audience, especially in consulting, which is different. Like if someone is coming to buy a shirt, like uh or an art product, they already see it and they'll buy. But for a consultant, there's 
there's more that they need to learn about your personality, your the way you work with the client, your background, like uh, my background, even though I do grants, I have like a project management background and a strategy background. So some clients who want that and mm -hmm. other clients just want like a one day thing. Again, um, in grants, you know, you before a client wins a grant, they have to wait like almost sometimes even half a year before they hear. So you want a client that is also patient and they've understood that journey that they're going to take. So you have to do that training. Um, basically what I say, what I do online is training, <laughs> train my clients. So by the time they're making the decision, they know I am the exact person that will be able to provide that service for them. Man, that's, that's, that's exceptional advice is that, Hey, every step is you kind of controlling the situation and educating mm -hmm. the client and ensuring that you're going to be a good fit because you're looking for those long-term relationships. There's nothing worse than getting into a long-term relationship for a year with a client mm -hmm. that you just don't jive with or who doesn't understand the process or what you're going to be doing together. And so I think that's, mm -hmm. that's a really insightful thing to point out uh, is just yeah. how important that that every stage of that um, of that courtship process is before you guys decide to do business. And, and in a consulting environment, um, there usually is a longer tail to that. I mean, you I think mm -hmm. when we when we were chatting um, on LinkedIn, you said something like there's about a three to six month lag time from when you first connect with someone and when they're finally going to make a decision. Yeah. So, yeah. So for consulting, there's there's a bit of time just because uh, and especially in the nonprofit sector, because they have to go back. So when I'm connecting, I'm connecting to the maybe the leader, and maybe that's the person that is looking for service, or they're overwhelmed with what they're doing, so they're really looking for someone that can help them. So they have to go back to their maybe their leadership to go and talk about it, and then they will discuss. Sometimes I have to do a proposal, like uh, just for the most recent, I had to go back and do like a proposal and share my services and how I'm going to offer that service. And I can talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So that takes like almost three months, you know? Yeah. So I want to make good, like a good decision. By the time uh, the client commits, they can stay for a long period. And again, uh, consulting is a high ticket, um, like a kind of like service. Mm -hmm. So you can't be out there always convincing everybody that is coming. It's more like um, uh, looking for maybe the one client first that you can work with for maybe a period of maybe six months, and then they give you a positive recommendation and before you move to the next one. You can get many clients. And again, I'm not looking for many clients. I'm just looking for the few clients that I can stay with. Because if you have a client that is going to pay you probably 30000 in a year, uh, you want to do a good job with them or, you know, so it can only take as many clients, maybe five, six, seven, eight. And that's enough. It's not a shot. It's a, you know, it's a, it's yeah. a business with relationships and collaborations in it. Yeah. So uh, I've learned to build more relationship and then growing through that and uh, making sure that my service uh, meeting their needs. Yeah. I gotta tell, I'm so happy for you. When I when you sent me that that um, message on LinkedIn, my you know my heart just jumped because I, I just I get excited when when people talk about the successes that they're having and you know the wins and and I can only imagine like if we look forward a year and we're having this conversation a year from now where your business mm -hmm. is going to be and how much better you'll be and 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 how much uh, bigger it'll be and and successful and so. Um, I'm just excited. I'm glad you're willing to share and talk with me, but I really appreciate it. Anything you want to say to anybody who's uh, who's watching this? Because I'm sure going to share this around. Yeah, I'll say just take take your time, take your time. Yeah, uh, manage the overwhelm. Um, come come up with the strategies. I would say also don't do it alone because that can be very overwhelming. To uh, starting a consulting business is not like starting any other like business it, there's a lot of structure that you have to build and that comes from learning like um the sales cycle is a whole structure that you need to learn um and build relationships with your client because again that's also very important uh to, to just include um and know that again some clients will take even a year to make a decision i've had clients that have uh, taken 
a whole year to make a decision and finally they made i remember like when i was starting this one client that i just decided to give them a free service and then they finally made a decision in um january that's almost like six months later so there's there's really a lot to <laughs> to be patient be patient yeah um also balancing uh i think one lesson i learned i did i did i did um like uh it was a side hustle for like about three, four months. I think I should have stayed a bit longer. I don't know, maybe uh, maybe six months before I jumped and mm -hmm. came for the training before I actually- Before you made the leap. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I should have come for the training before I, I signed it as a full-time, you know, cause I yeah. just went in and then I was like, okay, I need training. <laughs> Probably that would have reduced the learning curve, but then I'm here and now I'm doing this full time. I'm, I have no regrets. Um, I don't spend eight hours on my work. I have a baby, so I only do this for five hours, right? And be done with it. And that's enough for me. So there's there's a lot of joy in doing something for yourself than for others. There's also a lot of growth uh, in just uh, exploring something different. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Brenda, <laughs> I've taken up too much of your time, but I really appreciate you taking a minute to come in and share your story. And uh, I'm excited to see what the future holds. Thanks for yeah. coming on.